Good morning. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. My name is Mary Layton, and I'm chair of Adult Ministries at First Presbyterian Church in Gastinia. As you see, we've moved outdoors today. It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Nature's beauty is such a blessing when many of us have been isolated for such a long time. Now, you may hear birds. You may hear dogs. You may hear children. You may hear a lawnmower. But we're so glad to be outdoors, and I know we're all looking forward to being able to take advantage of it. Before we start our lesson today, I'd like to thank Celeste Crow, Bob Blake, and all the presenters who have just taken a huge leap of faith with us to make this work. Uh, we didn't know if we could do video Sunday school, and we can. We're so glad you're joining us to study Lesson 12 in our spring series entitled Justice and the Prophets. Here's the book. This week's lesson is called Practice Justice, and the scripture reading is from Jeremiah 21, verses 8 through 14. Let us begin our study with prayer. Heavenly Father, our greatest blessing is knowing you are always with us as we face anxiety about the future. We beg that you be with those who are living in sickness and in grief and those who are experiencing abuse and danger. We pray that our leaders use good judgment as they affect the lives of people all over the world. We thank you for the technology that brings us all together even when we are apart. And we pray for the prophets that you are sending us. We pray that we will listen. In the name of your sweet son, amen. Some of you have been to the Sistine Chapel at the Vatican in Rome, and you may have seen the beautiful, beautiful portrait of the prophet Jeremiah. <laughs> He's sitting down, and his head is in his hands, and he looks as if he's crying. In fact, he is called the weeping prophet. Well, I have no trouble now understanding why he wept. He was a prophet sent by God to five different kings. None of them paid attention to him. And eventually, he had to tell the last one that the Lord was abandoning them to the Babylonians. I think it's no wonder that he wept. Our lesson today poses three questions for you to think about. Do we have prophets today who speak truth to power? If so, who are they? And what are they saying? Does knowing that God helped the Babylonians defeat and destroy Judah fit in with your concept of a loving God. Is God's requirement, as stated by the prophets, that the leaders uphold justice and first and foremost protect the poor and the foreigners in our country, still a priority in 2020? As our Sunday School classes began this series on justice and the prophets back at the beginning of March, I realized how much I needed a review of this period of the Old Testament, which began with Isaiah in the middle of the 8th century B.C. and ended at 425 B.C. with Malachi. In all, there were 17 prophets. Over these many centuries, both Israel and Judah suffered from military threats from surrounding kingdoms including Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, and Persia. The nation of Israel fell to the Assyrian Empire about 720 B.C. To learn more about the prophets, I turned to a book by J. Daniel Hayes entitled The Message of the Prophets, which, may I say, is not light reading. Hayes writes that the book of Jeremiah takes us to Judah in 589 to 588 B.C., when the Babylonians had started their southern campaign against several small kingdoms. Israel had already fallen. 
king Zedekiah sent two officials to Jeremiah, our prophet, to be assured that Yahweh will once again miraculously res rescue the Judeans from their enemy. But Jeremiah sadly tells them that just the opposite will happen. God will side with the Babylonians to totally destroy Judah. Jeremiah reminds the officials that he has been sent repeatedly by God to warn five kings of Judah in turn to stop practicing idolatry, especially the sacrifice of children, and to be just rulers, putting first the protection of the poor, the orphans, the widows, and the foreigners in the country. Clearly the rulers have not repented or changed their behavior. What happens next is a total slaughter of all who defy the Babylonians. Those who surrender become the remnant that 70 years later formed the beginning of the New Jerusalem. Who was Jeremiah? Born in 650 AD, excuse me, born in 650 BC, he was only 14 years old when God called him to be a prophet. Jeremiah, a young man, protested he was way too young to be a prophet, but he went on to speak truth to power until his death at age 80. With a follower and a scribe named Baruch, he authored the books of Kings, Jeremiah, and Lamentations. Now let's look at our scripture for today, beginning with Jeremiah 12, verse 8. And to this people you shall say, Thus says the Lord, See, I am setting before you the way of life and the way of death. Those who stay in this city shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. But those who go out and surrender to the Chaldeans who are besieging you shall live, and shall have their lives as a prize of war. For I have set my face against this city for evil and not for good, says the Lord. It shall be given into the hands of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. To the house of the king of Judah say, Hear the word of the Lord, O house of David, thus says the Lord. Execute justice in the morning, and deliver from the hand of the oppressor anyone who has been blown, or else my wrath will go forth like fire and burn, with no one to quench it, because of your evil doings. See, I am against you, O inhabitant of the valley, O rock of the plain, says the Lord. You who say, who can come down against us, or who can enter our places of refuge? I will punish you according to the fruit of your doing, says the Lord. I will kindle a fire in its forest, and it shall devour all that is around it. Our author follows this scripture by saying, or asking, has God abandoned the covenant and the covenant people? According to Jeremiah, Israel and Judah have failed to keep covenant with God. They have ignored their God-given responsibilities to do justice and instead do whatever it pleases them to do. And remember that Jeremiah had been talking to the kings, and the kings had ignored their God-given responsibilities to do justice and instead had done whatever it pleased them. They think that their status as God's covenant people gives them automatic protection, regardless of whether they keep the statutes of that covenant. They are presuming upon God's grace. Of course, their attitude does get It falls to Jeremiah to point out to the people of Judah the error of their ways. And then again, here is the prophet where Jeremiah begins to weep. He announces Yahweh's judgment to the people as well as to the various rulers of the court and temple, but his words of judgment fall on deaf ears, in part because of the mistaken belief that Yahweh's promises were irrevocable and would guarantee their safety and security 
regardless of their actions. Jeremiah, Jeremiah calls repeatedly for Judah to repent and return to Yahweh and to covenant keeping. It is their only means of avoiding a repeat of history, a history of exile, death, and destruction. God's chief requirement for kings and other leaders was that they pursue and uphold justice for oppressed people. One of our questions is, is that still true today? If the king had studied God's law, he would have known that God's covenant included not only blessings for obedience, but also curses if Israel disobeyed. And here I just want to point out that some people like to say, if you don't know history, you are doomed to make the same mistakes. And clearly that, that is what happened here. And I think a warning for all history. He would have known that God's covenant included not only blessings for obedience, but also curses if Israel disobeyed. In Deuteronomy we read, but if you will not obey the Lord your God by diligently observing all his commandments and decrees, the Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You shall go out against them one way and flee before them seven ways. You shall become an object of heart of all the kingdoms of the earth. Just as leaders of Judah presumed upon God's covenant, neglecting their responsibility to pursue and uphold justice. God's people today also tend to presume upon God's grace and discount God's call to holiness. Scripture reminds us that while God's love is unconditional, we are called to obedience and faithfulness. Faith by itself, we are found, if it has no works, is dead. But we must hold these two ideas in tension, neither presuming upon God's grace nor imagining that being a good person will earn us favor with God. Now, this is a lot to, to consider here. Uh, we are being told repeatedly that if we do not keep the covenant with God, we will not have His favor. The prologue to the Ten Commandments is helpful in holding these seemingly opposite concepts together. For giving the law, God declared, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. God gives the law after having delivered the people from slavery, not before. It was not a matter of, if you obey me, I will save you and you will be my people. Instead it was, because I am your God, and you are my people, and because I have saved you, this is how I want you to live. Judah had plenty of chances to turn back to God, but they did not. Josiah instituted many reforms, but his sons did not continue in the path he marked for them, and they and their people suffered the consequences. And our author ends this section by saying, God still calls each of us in 2020 to turn back to God's ways and promises forgiveness and wholeness to all who respond to that call. The author of this series continues to ask the question, has God abandoned the covenant and the covenant people? told you there would be outdoor noises here. So what is our takeaway from this upsetting scripture? Now, it is a very upsetting scripture because the king assumes that, as always, God will protect the people of Judah and save them from whoever is attacking them, no matter what they do, and it just proves not to be the case. In fact, the remnant did return, and Jerusalem was rebuilt. But as we know from an earlier study of Malachi, who lived 200 years after Jeremiah, prophets still needed to remind kings forcibly about their role as just rulers. In fact, Malachi told the king that if he did not stop oppressing the poor and the foreigners, he would have his face, the king's face, 
bread with animal dung and have him led out in front of his people. Let's look again at the three questions posed in this study. And these are all important questions. Do we still need prophets to speak truth to power in our world? If so, who are they? And what are they saying? This Sunday School series may well have been written for such a time as this, when justice in our world seems to be critically lacking. How do you feel about God's destruction of Judah? Does this passage leave you uncertain about God's will for us? It's a constant admonition by the prophets that just leaders are those who always put the needs of the poor and foreigners first. Is it still important today? The prophet Micah said that kings and other leaders should, quote, walk humbly with their God. Is that just an old-fashioned idea? Are the notions of keeping a covenant with the Lord just old-fashioned? These are important questions to ask, but lest we dissolve in fears like Jeremiah, please come back next week for Lesson 13 with some good news. Jeremiah chapter 22 reminds us that God will not abandon us if we will indeed obey his word. And that lesson will be taught next week by Lynn and Todd Hathcock. So this is an interesting, an interesting lesson. It, it made me think throughout my study of a, of a father talking to his child and telling that child, over and over and over not to do something. And giving that child more chances each time and then finally just saying, I'm done. We have to practice tough love. I think that is exactly what uh, the Lord on a much bigger scale did um, with Judah. And it's something important to remember. Once again, thank you for being with us today. Uh, we're, we're really pleased to be able to share this important lesson with you. Let us close in prayer. Lord, you have made it very clear that you are always with us, and that thanks to the great sacrifice of your Son, we can look forward to salvation. But it is also clear that as resurrection people, we are expected to abide by your strong message to take care of the poor and strangers in our midst, perhaps now more than ever. I pray that we will listen to the words of the prophets as well as those of your dear son who told us to love our neighbors